exact amount. Well, then I was why making. did you leave Fate, where you're making fifteen hundred dollars a night, to go to Hollywood Live, where you would make less? And I told you at that time too that sometimes we have peak seasons and it starts dwindling down. So that maybe that's why I went to Hollywood. I can't recall. This was back in 2014. You said that you were working in liquor promotions. What's the name of the company that you worked for? I was trying to remember it. Um, you guys didn't pull any records for that either? You have bank records from Encore Worldwide and CEO. Is that where you worked for liquor promotions? That was way back. That, that was way back. I did other promotions for, I believe, Absolute. I cannot think no, of the, the other What's the name of the company that you worked for? I, I can't recall. I can't recall. Okay, was it Encore Nationwide? One of them, yes, ma'am. Okay, so that was a liquor promotion company that we have here that you worked for from January to December of 2013? If that's what's on my records, yes, ma'am. Okay, and then what's CEO? I don't recall. Okay, so then you stopped liquor promotions in December of 2013. I, I don't recall the dates. You said Encore Nationwide was, a, was the business that you yeah. worked for? Okay, so then if your last paycheck is in December of 2013, that's when you stopped liquor promotions, right? If that's what's on your records, I just know that I worked for another liquor promotion, but I, I don't know if it was Encore as well. And you said that in certain liquor stores, the owner would allow you to get tips when you handed out drinks. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that you think at the time they gave you paychecks. That's what you said? At the time, maybe. I honestly cannot recall from 20, what? 14 at that time, too? 2013, yeah. 2013, I can't. I'm asking you about what your attorney asked you. Is your... Is your, when you were working at liquor promotions though, you said just sometimes you would get tips if the owner allowed that to happen at yes, the liquor store. If that's what I had said, yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, today, you know, you said that this 2014, this cash spike was from your nightclub work, and then from Sigfredo Garcia. How much of it was from Sigfredo Garcia? I can't recall the amount. You don't remember? No, ma'am. When you were showing me that chart, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I wish I could remember. I don't remember, because you're asking me exact amounts and where I worked, and well, he didn't. I can't remember. He didn't provide you much money that often, right? It wasn't like a steady thing. And not that I can recall, no. So I mean, it's whenever he, I guess he would, it would come up on something, then he would he would give it to me. If he showed up and handed you five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, thirteen thousand two hundred dollars, that's something that you would remember, right? That never happens. It's not that it never happens. I told you, like it would happen. I don't I don't know the exact amount that he would give me. I don't want to commit to an amount that you're trying to tell me. I can't remember back in 2014. In your prior testimony, you said that he did not, and I'm looking at page 60, lines 18 through 25, you said that he did not steadily give you cash, he did not have a set date that he'd give you anything. Sometimes he would was there ever, you were asked, was there ever a time when he'd come to you and your attorney asked, well, would you consider $1,000 a significant amount of cash? You said yes. Would you, would then he give you a significant amount of cash? And you said yes. So you never said in that prior statement that he gave you anything more than $1,000. Um, which, which page number again? Page 60. 60 and in which line? Lines 18 through 25. I just said that there wasn't like a set amount that he would, that he had to give me anything. Right. It, and your, it would be whatever he had. Your attorney asked, did he give, you know, would you consider a thousand dollars a lot when he, if he would give you a thousand dollars and you said yes, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So a thousand dollars, him coming and giving you a thousand dollars, that would be a lot from him. After, from my testimony, yes, ma'am. Okay. And so if he came and gave you five thousand dollars in July or October or 10,000 or 13,000 in August, that would be very abnormal. It wouldn't be abnormal. It would just, I mean, I, 
you're trying to say if I could remember that amount? No, I'm saying that before you said a thousand dollars was it would be have been a significant amount. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So if he was giving you more than that, that's something that you would remember. That would be significant, right? Yes, yes, that would be a significant amount. But you don't remember. You have I no don't idea. Remember. Isn't it true that the reason that you move on? I want to ask you about this night at Yardbird you told us about. Yes, ma'am. In your prior testimony, did you have any indication that Sigfredo Garcia knew you were at dinner there or knew that you had gone there for dinner? No, ma'am. Okay, so Sigfredo Garcia didn't say anything to you that would lead you to believe that, was, that he that, knew you were at dinner. Yeah, that was the first time I, I mean, not the first time this time around, but I heard it through the trial. Okay, the, so you had no indications that he knew that? No, ma'am. And the whole July 1st jet ski incident, that was, you said, the same day as the voicemail to Harvey Adelson from Charlie Adelson? Yes, I'm sorry, from Sigfredo Garcia? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, so with this wire, Charlie Adelson gets contacted by his mom. She says she was given paperwork, which turns out to be this article about the murder. She says this TV probably cost $5,000. You agree with me that TV sounds like their code for this murder, right? Objection, lack of personal knowledge. Overruled, overruled if you know. I don't know, ma'am. Then Donna Adelson tells Charlie that it has to do with the two of them and the man mentioned an ex-girlfriend. Right? Yes, ma'am. And then Charlie calls you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Why did he call you? I have no idea. You don't know? No, ma'am. I don't know if that's before or after or when he spoke to his mom or when they mentioned my name or when he said ex-girlfriend. Like, it's been going round and round. I'm confused myself. Okay, and you said that in your last testimony, I'm looking at page 154, lines four through nine. Which lines, ma'am? 154, uh -huh. lines four, th four through nine. Yes, he was, I was saying that I'm his last ex-girlfriend. That's what you said in 2019, right? Yes, ma'am. That you were his last ex-girlfriend. Yes, to my okay. knowledge, yes. We've had testimony during this trial though, that he's had several girlfriends since you dated, though, yeah. between that and the bump, right? Yeah, that's, but I was explaining here that I'm his last ex-girlfriend. Like, I was his, he was dating June, I think, at that time. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know about Whitney, so I was his last ex-girlfriend you didn't know about Whitney no I just I heard about it now wasn't that like his first serious girlfriend after you and him broke up I don't know I'm that's why I'm getting confused because I'm learning so many things from here that I don't know when I knew that that was his girlfriend or I knew of that girlfriend I I know about June because she testified over here 
Okay, I mean, you knew that he was talking to lots of girls. Yes, ma'am. And dating lots of girls. Yes, ma'am. And you would actually chastise him in, in the messages about like him dating so many girls, moving them into his house, letting them drive his cars, right? Yes, ma'am. And you would check in with him about these girls. So you would say, you know, are you still talking to this girl, right? Uh, I might have mentioned it, but just to say it, you'd have to show me. Okay. In December of 2015, you say, are you still talking to the lame chick, the girl who's hot and is really not, and he says yes, or are you still seeing her? Yeah, but I don't know which one that is. Okay. I guess my point is, you know that you, you knew that you were not his last ex-girlfriend. I, to my knowledge, I was his last ex-girlfriend because he was dating June. Mm -hmm. Didn't really know. I didn't know about Whitney. I don't know if I've learned it from, from trial, but I was his last ex-girlfriend. If he was dating June and he dated me, I'm his last ex-girlfriend. Well, by your own admission, in the wiretap call, you say you've had a million ex-girlfriends, right? I understand that, but I'm saying I'm his last ex-girlfriend. We're talking about this. Right, but he had, you and him had broken up in the fall of 2014, and this bump is in the spring of 2016, right? You'd been together with Sigfredo Garcia again for a year at that point, at the time of the bump. At that point, okay. Right. He had dated tons of girls in between that, right? I believe so. Okay. You were not his last ex-girlfriend then. But I'm saying from the timeline from June, like June, the girl June. Right. I was his last ex-girlfriend. We were talking about it in here. Like, you're talking about the, wasn't this from the bump? was from October. Of from the bump, though? The like, transcript you're looking at is from October of 2019 when you say you were his last ex-girlfriend at the time of the bump. That's what you said last time was the reason that he called you when an ex-girlfriend was mentioned. But and that's you, what I'm saying. But you're, you're talking about a specific date on this, what's going on right now, too. This is not, not on the 19th. This is a transcripts from the 19th. Right. I'm saying, though, that you knew you were not his last ex-girlfriend. Isn't that true? I'm confused because I'm saying that I was his last ex-girlfriend. What are you talking okay. about from when we were talking in Dolce Vita? Right. So you, okay. thought, you thought that you were his last ex-girlfriend. Objection. Before Ask and I'm so Let's see if you can ask it one more time. Yes, sir. Okay. You believe you were his last ex-girlfriend yes, before the bump, and that's the reason he called you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And he called you because he wanted you to deal with this for him, right? I don't know if this is the reason why he had mentioned my name and why he wanted me to call. Okay, well... Even before, though, that you knew your name was mentioned, you were willing to help him with the problem, right? I was listening to him. I don't know at that moment if I, I was saying that I was willing to help him. Okay, I want you to look at your, that same page, 154, lines 17 through 19. In 2019, you said... Before your name was mentioned, you were willing to help him with that problem. I said, I said yes, ma'am. Okay. And you're asked by Charlie Adelson to call this number. You don't know why he's asking you to do this other than you're his last ex-girlfriend. You, and then the person that you get to call the number coincidentally just happens to be the shooter of the crime that Charlie Adelson thinks he's being blackmailed for, right? I mean, can you ask your question one more time? You were asked by Charlie Adelson to call this number yes. on the article. Yes. You got someone else to do that for you, right? Yeah, I asked Sigfredo to do it. So you coincidentally get the person who was the shooter of this crime that Charlie Adelson's being blackmailed. I mean, right? I was just asking Sigfredo to call the number. Okay, and just coincidentally, he also, he's the shooter. I didn't even know about any of that until the trial. Okay, so that is a coincidence. I, if the, in your opinion, I believe so. All right. Um, I, no, I don't think it's a coincidence. I'm saying you're saying that that's a coincidence. You didn't actually have anything to do with it. No, ma'am. 
and you didn't actually know what it was about or who you were getting to call for that reason, anything? No, ma'am. Other than the fact that they said um, Katie and Tutho. Yeah, and when, when Charlie Adelson told you that his mom said it has to do with Tuto and Tato, why didn't you say, you know exactly who that is, Charlie. Tuto is Sigfredo. No, he was saying it in different ways, and then that's why I'm, I never corrected him. I know like they've asked me about that before. I didn't know that I had to correct him and say, well, you know him. Mm -hmm. You know, you know the father of my kids. Like, why are you saying the name different? And he said that though multiple times. He said, "I don't even know who Tudo is." He said that on the phone, and he said that in Dolce Vita, didn't he? Um, on the phone, I think I heard it, but on the Dolce Vita, I don't remember. And you just though you just didn't correct him, just didn't ask why I he just was acting didn't, like he didn't know who Tudo was. That's the whole reason why I'm even in here because I wasn't asking the questions. Why don't you ever mention Garcia's name to Charlie Adelson? Why don't I ever mention his name? Right. Like the Tuto? No, why don't you ever say Tuto or Garcia to Charlie Edelson? Why do you just say he this, he that? I never mention his name to him. Right. Why not? I just don't. Like, I'm not going to be like saying, I don't know. I just, I didn't. Why don't you ever mention Charlie's name to Sigfredo Garcia? I've always referred to him like my friend or vice versa. Like, I always say my friend. I don't think they want to hear about each other's name whenever I'm mentioning them. So whenever you talk to Garcia about Charlie Adelson, you always say that person or my friend. Or my friend, yeah. Okay. I mean, if you if you called him and are talking to him about that person, well, how does he know who you're talking about? Did I did I ever message him saying that person? In the wiretap call, yeah. You were t you're talking to Sigfredo Garcia and referring to Charlie as that person. I I don't recall. Why don't you just say Charlie? I never mentioned either one of their names because I don't know. I just never. I just didn't. I mean, isn't the reason though that you never say their names is because you are all afraid that law enforcement might be listening? Well, apparently everybody had a burner phone, so why would anybody even be talking on the phone? Charlie called you. Charlie said that he I, wanted the problem flushed. Yeah. That problem was this bad guy that Objection, was trying. Objection. That's not in evidence. Overruled. That was trying to extort his mom? That was a joke. Okay. Um, but he wanted you. You were the person that he wanted to take care of this problem, right? Yes, because somebody mentioned my name. We've right. gone over this. Out of all the people in the world, though, he chose you. And you're saying that... Because they mentioned my name. Okay. Today... And I'm... Tuto's name. And then mentioned Tato's name. So, yeah, that's why... I was confused. All right. What happened in the car before y'all went to Dolce Vita? I don't even recall that. That's what I was asking when they said that there's a 10-minute meetup in a car. Like, where's that video or where's that? Did he search you for a wire? You're talking Charlie about Adelson. Charlie? Yeah. No, because I don't even recall that happening. All right. When did you find out that Dan Markell was murdered? I believe I found that when, when Sigfredo got arrested. Okay, so that was the first time that you'd ever heard of Dan Markell, his brother-in-law, being murdered. Yes, ma'am. Charlie Adelson never told you that? No, ma'am. And you and him talk all the time? Not all the time. You'll see the phone records. It shows. I've seen them, and y'all talk all the time. You were just telling me earlier that like our conversations stop, like dwindle down. No, I was saying that you said that he was ghosting you. Okay. Okay. You and Charlie Adelson talk all the time, right? I guess so. Okay. And when Sigfredo, I mean, he never mentioned to you that Dan Markell had been murdered. No, ma'am. What was it that you thought he was saying that made national news, BBC mm -hmm. News, Good Morning America? What was, he talking? what was who saying? What was Charlie Adelson talking about? What made I national don't know. News? I didn't even know what BBC was. You know what Good Morning America is, Yes, so, right? I, I, I know that, but I didn't, it wasn't anything that was like popping out. He never mentioned Dan Markell. He never mentioned Tallahassee. He never mentioned anything about a murder. Those things would stick out. Right. I would think that they would. But he didn't talk about that. I'm telling you. And Why he, didn't you ask? I mean, what, what was on Good Morning America? What was on national news? 
I don't remember what happened. I mean, we have the whole video and it didn't right, even pick up anything I said. to you what he was talking about. He didn't explain anything. He was saying scenarios. Okay. In the Dolce Vita video, he's saying it's either somebody trying to blackmail his family or it's the cops working undercover. Yes, Why would it be the police? Why would the police be investigating his family? I don't know. Why isn't your first question, why in the world would the cops be running an undercover investigation on your family? I don't even know if I ever mentioned that. I don't know. Don't remember what happened in 2014. Looking at page 155, lines 3 through 11. You were asked why would it be the cops? Page 155, lines 3 through 11. You were asked why it would be the cops. You said, I don't know, because he's always talking about the cops. Mm -hmm. You were asked, but didn't you ask him why the cops would be running an undercover operation on his mother? And you said, no, ma'am. So I didn't ask. Right. You didn't ask. Why yeah. wouldn't you ask? Why would the cops be running an investigation on your family? I don't know. That's, what I, that's the whole reason of why he was meeting up with me, because he doesn't even know what was going on. Now I see that he did. Right. I mean, we're not talking about him, though. I'm saying... You didn't ask why his, the, his, the cops would be running an undercover investigation on his family, did you? Well, no, ma'am. Okay. And this may be the third time objection asked and answered. All right, that was asked and answered. Okay. Let's move on. I want to ask you about this Dolce Vita video. Yes, ma'am. All right, so Charlie Adelson says in that clip. Well, objection, that, Judge, as to what Charlie Adelson said? Overruled. This is, uh, she can give her interpretation. It's up to the jury to decide, but she can ask the question. When he says at the very beginning of that clip, if they had any evidence, we'd already be gone to the airport by now. Objection. What did you understand? I didn't hear that. Overruled. I didn't even hear anything that the, the recording was saying. 
You didn't hear but any I didn't, of that? I didn't hear anything that you, like the line that you just said, I did not hear that on the recording. When that recording started, you didn't hear him say, if they had any evidence, we would have already gone to the no, airport ma'am. by now. So you had no idea of what he was talking about, evidence of what? I don't know, ma'am. If he did say that, what evidence of what? I wouldn't know. I don't know what I said. Okay, so in the next statement when he's saying if they bug your phone, you're still not talking about any of this? I mean, what are you not talking about? I don't know what he's talking about. You couldn't hear anything that he said? No, ma'am. Okay. Maybe my volume wasn't high enough. Can you just describe that one again? Let's try it one more time. of clip that time when he says if we had any evidence we would have already gone to the airport by now uh, the only thing i caught was bug phone okay I, I didn't hear anything in the beginning if he had said to you if they had any evidence we'd already be gone to the airport by now what was he talking about evidence of what i have no idea i told you he was saying scenarios and i can't remember what he was talking about at that time so he wouldn't have been trying to ease your mind let you know if this is the cops they don't have anything on us no when he says, if, even if they bug your phone, and at the end he says, you still have not been talking about this. I didn't, what have you not been talking about on your phone? I didn't hear anything that said anything about me not talking on the phone. When, they, when he was talking about, even if they bug this, even if they bug your phone, okay. at the end of the clip, he says, you still have not been talking about this. So even if your phone is bugged, you're but still not talking about this. But is he implying to me, like, he's, he might have been saying scenarios. You guys are keep taking things out of context, and it's not, I don't even know. I can't answer that question if I don't know the whole thing. Okay, so I'm, I'm telling you what I'm hearing on here and I'm asking you about it. What you're, you're hearing? Judge, that's uh, improper. All right, I don't wanna get argumentative. You've already asked and answered that question. Yes, Let's sir. move on. You never went to Tallahassee, did you? No, ma'am. And you never shot anybody, did you? No, ma'am. I wanna play the next clip for you. He's telling you there that you have to be able to put the person at the scene at the time in order to prove a crime. You can't just say, oh, my brother did it, or oh, I shot JFK. You've got to have evidence. That's what he's telling you, right? Okay. Is that, that's what he's telling you, right? I mean, that's what I said on the recording. What is he talking about? I have no idea. That's what I'm telling you. He keeps talking in scenarios. I don't know what he's talking about. Right, and last time when you, when you testified in 2019, you said that he was just talking in scenarios. You didn't have any specific member, rem memory about what, right? Exactly, I didn't remember anything specific. Right, your attorney asked you today whether if last time you explained what was in the Dolce Vita video. Yes, what you explained was that you remember him talking about scenarios, you didn't know what they were, you didn't have any specific memory of that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and you don't know why he's trying, he's letting you know that, hey, in order to prove a crime, they have to put the person at the scene of a crime. You don't know why. I don't know why.
In that one, he tells you, if this person went to the cops, they're going to be asked, you know, well, where's the weapon? Did you witness it? No, you just heard a rumor. Well, that's worth zero. You have to get them on a wire. You have to get the person to confess. Outside of that, there's no evidence. That's what you heard, right? Um, parts of it, yes, ma'am. Okay. And he's saying, right, that if you guys all keep quiet, no one's going to have any evidence of you, right? I didn't know what he was talking about. I didn't know what he was talking about. He's saying scenarios over and over. Why is he talking to this about, about this with you? I don't know. What is he saying the cops aren't going to have evidence of? I have no idea. You had no clue? No. And you didn't ask either, did you? That's your testimony? I don't remember what we were talking about or if I asked him. I mean, I'm re I hear myself responding, but... Right, but you, you did say that you never asked why the cops would be running this undercover investigation, right? I believe so. Okay. You were in this Prius that Garcia and Rivera rented for the July trip to Tallahassee. You were in it at some point, right? No, ma'am. You never sat in it? Never sat in Never rode with Garcia just to get food or something? No, ma'am. All right. The father of your children was in that Prius, though, right? Well, with the, with the picture that they've showed, I see, yeah, he was in that Prius. Okay. And... In this video, Charlie Adelson is giving you examples of how just because a person was in a car that someone used to commit a crime, that doesn't mean anything, right? On what video? On the Dolce Vita video. I don't recall that part. Okay. So here, in those two clips we listened to, he was saying, you have to be able to put the person at the scene at the time, not in the car. Let's say you sat in the car, right? Then I go commit a crime, but your DNA is in there, and I said, Katie was in my car, and she did this horrible crime. Okay, they get your DNA in the car, and it, okay, okay, Katie was in the car. No, that means Katie sat in the car for two minutes and got out. Katie has nothing to do with me robbing Burger King. That's what you heard, right? Um, parts of it, yes, ma'am. Okay, and then he gives you another rental car example. He said, if you have a car and you can link this person to renting that car that's used at the scene of the crime, you also have to prove who was driving that day. You know, they could have rented it and lent it to a friend. Then he gives you another one, doesn't he? He says, you rent a car and I ask to borrow it. I drive to Orlando, rob a McDonald's and come back. Yeah, you rented it, but you were out. You didn't even know I took your car. Doesn't, isn't that what you heard? Parts of it, yes. Why is he giving you so many rental car examples? I wish I knew. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's saying scenarios. Don't you think it's kind of odd? Why is he saying all those scenarios in front of other people or whatever? If, like, apparently, if he thought that I was, what did you say earlier, that I'm wearing a wire? No, I think that he didn't think you were wearing a wire. I think he thought that y'all were in a loud restaurant. 
and he's trying to ease your mind. Exactly. And he's t yeah, saying to you, right, that he's saying. But why is he, he keeps explaining himself, like, and he says, I don't have anything to do with it. Why is he trying to convince me that he has nothing to do with it when all I right, don't right, know right, what right. he's talking about? I'm going to shut I'm this. I'm sorry. Okay. She's going to ask the questions, and you're going to respond, okay? He is trying to ease your mind because the car that Garcia and Rivera rented to drive up here and kill Dan Markell had been on the news, right? I don't know of that. You were nervous that police might be able to connect them to having rented it or been in that car, weren't you? Why would I be nervous? I never even knew of it. You never knew that the car was on the news? I knew from when Sigfredo got arrested, and I think they put a picture of that, of the Prius. He was trying to tell you in that video that it doesn't matter if they rented a certain car or were seen in a certain car. Police have to be able to put them at the scene of the crime at the time, right? That's what he had said on the, on the video, but I don't know what he was talking about. So he's just talking about that. You have no he's idea He's giving why. different scenarios. Okay. One of the scenarios he gave was he said, you know, it could be the cops, you know, trying to run an undercover investigation, or it could be somebody trying to blackmail his family. That was the other scenario, right? Yes, ma'am. Why did he think somebody would be extorting money from his family? I don't know. That's what he was trying to figure out. Wouldn't you be curious as to why someone was trying to blackmail his family? Would I be curious? Right. I was curious. That's why I sat there and I listened. Right. But you never asked him, why would somebody be trying to blackmail your family? Why are the cops doing this investigation on your family? I don't know if I asked them at that time or not, because you apparently they didn't even... You did not, right? <laughs> well, apparently then I don't, I don't, because I don't recall. But if that video said, or like it picked up anything that I was saying, then I would know what I was talking about. Well, you said in 2019 that you did not okay, ever so then ask I don't. that, right? And now though, the video is audible. Right, and it's pretty obvious you would have known what was going on in Objection. order to listen I to don't. all this. Oh, of the evidence. All right, ask a question, Ms. Yes, Stevens. sir. All right, let's listen to one more. about 12, 15 seconds in there, you heard him say that, you know, if this was somebody blackmailing his family, this is somebody who knows information. That's what he said to you, right? If that's what it said on the video. Is that what you heard, that this is someone no, who knows No, all I heard, I heard a little bit in the end, um, but I didn't hear the first sentence, like what you were just saying right now. What is he talking about that these people know information about? I don't know. I keep telling you, I don't even remember. Okay, got one more. No, she just keeps saying nothing.
that he's saying if there's if this is a bad guy there's two ways of dealing with it we can go ahead and call the police they'll contact him arrange a setup take him down but then he'll be telling everything he knows or else he's going to serve 10 years in prison and the next thing you know that person's singing and he's going to start calling your name out and my parents are going to have to say they're going to be asked the story of what happened isn't that what you heard I didn't hear that, like not all of everything that you're saying, but like I said, I don't know what he's talking about. Well, you heard him say at the end of that clip that they're going to be calling your name out, that black My mailer. name? Right. No. I did not hear that. But this bad guy who knows is going to tell the cops information, why would he be calling your name out? I don't know. All right, got one more.
So in that clip, after he explains that this bad guy could tell information to the police, could call your name out, he says, this is my idea. And he gives you very precise instructions, doesn't he? In that yeah, clip. he was talking about the calling mm -hmm. to, say, to say it's, um, yeah. He told you to say, my friends have no idea what you're talking about. And frankly, mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about either, but the name sounds familiar of who is incarcerated. Yes, ma'am. Whose name did he think sounded familiar? I believe it's because his mom got um, bumped and said that you have to help your friends Tato or something. Right. Like your brother Tato. I don't know. He's talking about Tato or Tuto. Okay. Um, the name Tato and Tuto were familiar to you. Yes, right? ma'am. And you never had to tell him who Tuto and Tato were. He knew and you knew. Right? I don't know if he knew. Well, yeah, he did. He, know, he knew Tuto's name. Okay. I don't know about Tato. Tato was the one who was incarcerated, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you knew that? I knew he was incarcerated by the feds, but I don't know where he was at. All right, and he said, so I'm going to give you something as charity to help the less fortunate, but do not contact these people again or they're going to the police. The only reason we're doing it is because of karma. And the whole time that you're talking, this is what he's telling you to do, right? Okay. You're, he wants you to say, I don't know what's going on, and only use the words help and charity right okay he really didn't want you to give this guy any information about what you knew did he didn't want to give who the he really didn't want you to give this blackmailer any information about what you knew right he's saying don't say anything else right no he's just he's trying to convince me now that how many times i've listened to it he's trying to convince me to do this if i was in anywhere shape or form in this with him why would he throw me to the cops and tell me to because say this. you were the ex-girlfriend who took care of this problem for him you are his connection to these people he wants you to take care of it no they mentioned my right. name they mentioned tuto's name right. and then they mentioned about a brother being incarcerated which was tato i know and then he starts so, talking about sigfredo garcia right after this that clip right that we just heard he starts talking to you about Sigfredo Garcia, doesn't he? Refresh my mind. Like, what Charlie was he Adelson saying? Charlie Adelson starts talking to you about Sigfredo Garcia, doesn't he? I don't know who he was talking about. In that clip we just heard, he's saying, now he's fucking with him, he's fucking with his wife. You, if he's fucking with the king himself, you'd better kill him because he's going to be a big problem. He knows who you are. And if he can't do it, have someone else do it. Right? Yeah, but he's not talk, it's talking about Tuto there. Like, where? He's not? No. Okay. Well, let's keep listening, but one second. 
he's telling you though in that part that i just talked about how mad garcia needs to be about this right some guy is messing with you putting your name out there as part of this and you need to kill him or he's going to be a big problem he either needs to do it or have somebody else do it right that's not that's what i'm saying like that's I'm, i don't think he's talking about sigfredo there okay uh when when he says that to you why why don't we see you jumping up from the table? Why don't we see you raising your voice saying, whoa, whoa, kill? What are you talking about? We don't... Yeah, I would have said something like that, but I didn't even know what he's saying about kill. But obviously, I didn't react that way because it wasn't something that's like... Well, you heard him say, he better kill him or he's going to be a big problem. Either he can do it or have someone else do it. You heard him say that, right? Part of it, yes, ma'am. Okay. And you didn't jump out and run out of there? No. Okay. You didn't raise your voice and start, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not being a part of anything like this, did you? No, but he, if he's like saying scenarios and he's talking about stuff, like I'm probably not even, like it's, it's nothing that like made me like, oh my God, like what are you talking about? Like, why are you even talking, period? Charlie said, so help me God, if they fuck with my family, it's going to be Nazi shit. This will be done. I mean, Katie, I don't care what I have to spend. I swear to God. Mm-hmm. He's telling you that he needs this guy killed, and he doesn't care what he has to spend. That's Objection. what he's saying, right? Overruled. I mean, if that's what he's saying, I, I, can't, I can't say what he was stating it for. What... what did you understand him to mean when he said that? Charlie's always talking about different, you've heard people say that he's always talking about some weird stuff. Like that's not something that like, oh, somebody is messing with his family, I, I get that. And somebody's trying to blackmail his mom or whatever, but it's not to the point where I was like, you know, like it didn't make me like, whoa. I have one question. He said to you, you better kill him or he's gonna be a big problem. He can't, if he can't do it, have someone else do it and he didn't care what he had to spend, right? Objection, asked and answered. That's been asked and answered. You seem pretty calm when he's saying this to you. Wouldn't you agree with that? I don't know how my demeanor was. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I wasn't like, whoa, like I didn't run out and jet out of there. Had he said that to you before? Like when he wanted his brother-in-law killed? Said what? He's never spoken about- He wanted someone killed. He he didn't care how much he had to spend to do it. No, ma'am, he's never spoken about Professor Michael or murder or having anything to do with that. That's why it didn't raise anything okay, to I me. I want to show you one thing. Just going to make this screen. So I, this is the same clip we've been listening to, and I've been pausing this one. Let's keep listening and see who he was just talking about. right after he's telling you he needs somebody killed he doesn't care what he has to spend 
30 seconds after that, he's checking in with you about Sigfredo Garcia. He says at six minutes and 57 seconds in that clip, he knows I have you on salary. You think you'd be happy to know that. I didn't hear that. You did about not a salary or nothing, no. He says he doesn't have any bad feelings towards me, does he? Our paths never cross. That I can assume that maybe he was talking about Sigfredo. Right. He says... I didn't know the two of you would be working out. He's talking about Sigfredo there. I believe so. Like, with what he's saying at that part, yes. Right after, from what we just talked about, he's saying, this guy needs to be killed. If he can't kill him, find somebody else to do it. He's going to be a big problem. He's fucking with me. He's fucking with his wife, right? Objection, accent answered. Overruled. He's talking about Garcia right after that. I don't know if he was talking about Garcia. You He's just, talking about Garcia now that he, the, the part that where you're saying that, oh, our paths never cross or whatever. Okay. I can assume he's talking about Sigfredo, but at that time, I don't think he's talking about Kill and all of this and saying that it was him. Why didn't he just say his name? You do admit, though, he's talking to you about Garcia right after he's telling you that he needs to have someone killed, and if he can't do it, find someone else who can do it. Objection. Accent answer. Ask and answer. All right. So what he's trying to do when he's checking in is he have any bad feelings towards me? I keep you on, I have you on salary. You think you'd be happy about that? He's trying to make sure that Garcia doesn't have a reason not to help you with this, right? I didn't hear anything about the salary and he's saying keeping him keeping me happy. There was no overlap in us dating. I keep you on the payroll, right? I, I'm not going to say yes to that because I don't believe that that's what So was he checking with you in that about. clip we just heard to see if Garcia had any bad blood against him? Not at that part, no ma'am. All right. Next, after he's checked, he tells you what he needs done. He's checking with you about Garcia. Then... He says to you, you know it. I don't have to sit here and tell you what I would do for you. I show you what I do for you. You know how I am. I look for things to do. What's your objection? It motions in limine, Judge, just in, in terms of Miss Duguid's interpretation of what is being right. said. It's going to be up to the jury to, to decide. That's overruled. Isn't that what he said? Uh, keep going, ma'am. He's saying, I look for things to do for you. You don't have to ask me for shit. I'm the one that's like, hey, someone's birthday is coming up. I got you, right? That's what he said, yes. Okay, just like when he's offering to send you and your mom on a cruise, right? Well, he offered it, but like I told you, I never went on a cruise with Paying my mom. Paying for the uh, Dominican vacation, right? He looks for things to do for you. Okay. To keep you happy. I guess. When you were with Charlie Adelson, you were they you were sleeping with both Charlie Adelson and Garcia at the same time, right? I mean they I weren't can't. aware of each other. I mean they knew of each other but they didn't know you were with both of them at the same time, right? Not that I was I, I mean it might have overlapped, but I don't remember I don't remember that. Okay. I mean I don't remember if it was Charlie at the same Adelson time. didn't know that there was any overlap. <clears throat> That he didn't know. I don't know what he knew. Okay, well, he told you. I we we didn't have any overlap. Oh, with, with the from the video. Right. 
And you tried to keep them separate. That was something that you did when y'all were when you were with Charlie, right? You tried to keep Garcia separate from him. Well, I didn't think they'd like each other. Right. Gar Garcia was jealous of Charlie. I believe so. We heard Charlie say he helps you out when it's somebody's birthday. Who's he talking about? I have no idea. I don't know if he's talking about Sigfredo because I know there was a comment about like some GoPro or whatever, but. Isn't Garcia's, when's Garcia's birthday? The 27th of April. Of April, okay. So is he talking about getting Garcia birthday presents? I, not, not to my knowledge, I don't know. I'm assuming maybe that's what he's talking about, but. Why would he get Garcia a birthday present? He always jokes about stupid things like that. Why would he get his ex-girlfriend's boyfriend a birthday present? I wouldn't know, but he'd make jokes like that before, just like the GoPro, but he never got him a GoPro camera or whatever it was. Um, after your discussion about Garcia, he checks in on Garcia's gang connections, right? See if those are still there? Who checks in? Charlie Adelson. The checks in. That's He's never been in a judge. gang. Overruled. Garcia is not in a gang. Let's look at your other one. So when I first started that clip, he said, I don't think they want to mess with his connections. And he says, is he so far removed? Does, does he still have people? Does he have anybody that he can call up that's, right? He's, I didn't even, I, you didn't I'm hear that? trying to like hear what he's saying and I didn't hear that. Okay. He then says to you at the end of that clip, listen, you giving money to somebody is not an admission of any kind of guilt. I heard that part. Okay. Guilt of what? I don't know. What would you be guilty of? Exactly, I don't know. Well, then why is he saying that to you? I don't know. You were, what did you understand it to mean? I don't know. I, I can't interpret what it was happening at that time. Like, I don't know what it means. He was saying that because you were concerned that giving this $5,000 would make you look guilty, right? That it would make me look guilty? Yeah. If that's your assumption, but I, I didn't do any of that. All right, I have two more very quick ones. Almost done. Yeah, I'm just going to object to the state's little subtitle. All right, it's Sorry. coming on. Yes, I'm going to object to the state using any demonstrative or anything that has their work product or their opinion on it. All right, it's overruled. It was just uh, your identification it meant nothing to the jury it came up on the screen oh i'm sorry
right. He says, let me ask you a question. When everybody was there the next day, did any of you take any money? It's not like you're driving around in a Bentley, cruising around in a mega yacht. You heard that, right? Yes, ma'am. What did you understand that to mean? I don't know, but now it kind of makes sense with everything that, you know, like with other people saying it about the money, but nobody ever got money. I don't know what. When he said when everybody there was there the next day, what day is he talking about? I don't know. Isn't he saying when everybody, you, Tuto, Tato, were together the next day after the murder when you gave them the money? None of you took it and did anything extravagant, right? None of y'all were that's what it, it's assuming. That's what it makes it look like to me. Okay. I see it now. He's checking to see y'all weren't too flashy with this. That would draw attention to you, right? Okay. Objection, mischaracterization of the evidence. Overruled. In the form of a question next time, Ms. Dugan. Okay. Did you ask him what that meant? Mm, I don't recall if I did or if I didn't. Okay. Let's listen to the end of that clip and then I'll go straight into the very last one. At the end of that conversation, in that last clip, he says, he says, you know who this is coming from? The inside. What did you understand that to mean? I didn't understand what he was talking about. He keeps saying it has nothing to do with me. He's giving scenarios and you're misinterpreting it and I can't remember because that was from 2014. Okay, I, I did not. Did you hear him say, you know who this is coming from, the inside? He's saying that, but he's not saying it toward, like, he's not implying me directly. What did you understand that to mean? I didn't know. Okay. So not the inside circle, you, him, Tato Tuto, of who knew well, how this it's murder that, went That's down? what I'm saying. You keep implying these things, and that's not, you're taking it out of context. And I know that looks bad now with everything that we've been hearing, but it's, Obviously, it didn't make me like, oh, my God. Like I said, I didn't run out of there and think it was a big deal. I mean, he chose you for a reason, though, right? You yeah, were the apparently. person that he chose to take care of this. I mean, I know you're saying you don't know today, but we heard you on the wiretap call. In that call, you say, I, I fuck up bitches for no reason. You say, this guy is going to have a big-ass problem. I am the wrong person to... God forgive him that he said the wrong fucking name. Now this is my business. You yes. said that, right? Yes, ma'am. And that's okay. taken out of context as well. well you were I pretty... was angry by that. Yeah. I'm sure you were angry. You were pretty tough in those calls, though. You were somebody who knows how to take care of things, somebody who people shouldn't mess with, weren't you? You should have played all the other calls as well. You just, one little call that I was so upset already. We've been, he's been annoying me with this different scenarios right for today, all the other calls today and i was you're acting uh, you're pretending not to be that person you just don't know anything about anything didn't ask judge, any questions objection improper question she's pretending to be someone today all right i will we'll strike the question ask another question today you're saying you don't know anything and you didn't ask any questions right yes ma'am Why were you talking in code on the wire? I guess that's what everybody's implying is code. I know I made a comment saying like, I'm so tired of this code shit or whatever because we're around, I'm either around my coworkers, I'm around my children, I'm around other people. So he's probably around his coworkers. You told Sigfredo, or you told Sigfredo Garcia that Ethan's clothes cost $65 and 70 cents, right? Yes, ma'am. Those were actually the last four digits of the undercover, undercover phone number. That was a code, right? 
And I just did not want to say it over the phone, somebody's phone number, because I was either at work or I don't know where I was. Why would giving a phone number cause an issue for somebody at work or one of your kids? He's trying to call some number that they want me to figure out if it's somebody blackmailing their family. Why would I say that phone number out loud? Right, but you're not saying the whole story. You've already told Garcia the story when you're at home. On the phone, you're just giving him the number. Why couldn't you just say the number? I just said it that way. You didn't say the number because you were afraid law enforcement was might be listening and you knew exactly what it was about, right? Why would I think they were listening? I wouldn't use my phone. All right. You say that... What's a, you said that you got a burner phone, and you got a burner phone the day after the police went to uh, his job, right? I never got him? the burner phone. I said Sigfredo got the burner phone when mm -hmm. after what, before he got arrested. Didn't you think it was crazy that Garcia wanted you to use a burner phone? They just went, the feds just went to go question him. And at the same time, I didn't even know that they were doing it the same exact moment that they were banging on my door. If you had nothing to do with the murder, why did Garcia get you a burner phone, not just him? I don't know. He's the one who got it. Because okay. he figured that it was somebody banging in the door, and then I guess that's why we wanted to talk. But you'd have the same phone number your whole life. Weren't you curious as to why he wanted you to use a burner phone now? No. You didn't ask? No. The feds just came to his job. Okay. Um... And after getting the burner phones, you fled your home. I never fled. You never stayed at your home again. I packed up my stuff a couple days after, but my family you wanted... You had someone pack up your stuff. No, I packed it. If they had the cameras over there, they would have seen that I went there. I packed my stuff, and then I had one of Sigfredo's guy friends to go do the U-Haul for me because I can't lift anything. Dan Markell occurred that summer of 2014, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so he never, Sigfredo Garcia never, where did he say that he was going when you, you took him to the comfort rental car? I never took him. Okay. It's just a coincidence then that of all the places. I, I never was, knew his whereabouts or whatever around that time because we weren't even together. Okay, just a coincidence then that of all the places you could be in Miami and that he could be in Miami, you're using a cell site that services Comfort Rental at the exact moment that he's renting a car and you go straight there, time on the rental car, and you go back home. I never took him to go get a rental. Okay, so that is just a coincidence you're saying? If, if that's your opinion, yes, ma'am. And he was also in that rental car as soon as he got back from that trip to Tallahassee. That was outside of your, of your apartment, right? They had that... The GPS car, ping? Yeah, the GPS ping on that parking lot, but that parking lot, other people live there. Okay. Did you ever see him in the rental car? No, I did not. Okay. And you went right back to that area later that day? Right back to what area? To the area of comfort rental car. And you weren't taking the car back? with him? No, I did not. I never took him to get a rental. What about when the Prius was at your house the night before the Tallahassee trip? Did he mention either of those times that he's at your house right before, right after the June trip or right before the July trip, where he was going and what he'd been doing? I never even knew that that Prius car was in the parking lot. Did he just, did he say that he was about to go to Tallahassee? No, I would have remembered if he said something about Tallahassee. He doesn't know anybody in Tallahassee. What about during the 15 or 20 times that you communicated with Garcia during the June trip or the July trip? He never mentioned where he was? You never asked him where he was or what he was doing? I never asked him where he was. And he wouldn't tell me even if I was to ask him. He doesn't tell me things. What about the night of the murder? You're July 18th, when you're consistent with being at Rivera's house after you go past Yindra Mascaro's residence. Did you go to Luis Rivera's that night? No, ma'am. Where were you? I don't recall what I, where I was in July 18th. Hey, well, you were talking to Garcia, and then it shows you going up near Rivera's house, and then after that, your phone is powered off for the night, right? And that's when you go spend the night at Charlie's? I don't know what happened in July 18th. That's what it's saying on the 
things or whatever. Well, you told your attorney when she was asking you questions, you did spend the night with Charlie that night, right? No, I was, I, I don't even remember where I was. I don't know if I was up north or whatever. I don't remember that day. Yindra was taking care of your kids that night, right? Well, apparently, yeah, but when she had said that she took, I didn't remember that day until she mentioned that it was, it might have been that night. Okay. Yindra was taking care of your kids that night then? That's, yeah. that's, what, that's what I'm saying is I don't see her. My daughter was little at that time. Like, I never leave my daughter overnight. That's why it wouldn't make sense to me. I never leave my daughter like overnight at so somebody's Yindra house. So Yindra was not telling the truth when she No, I, I don't know if she babysat that day. I just don't remember. I don't recall ever leaving my children at night. I was living with my mom at that time. Well, if that was the case, I would have had my mom because they, they would the kids would have been more comfortable. If Charlie invited you over, you're going up there, your phone's powered off for the night, and you're coming back for that direction that next morning. That's the route that it's showing, but I don't remember what I did that night. Well, There's you no stayed text with Charlie messages. during that time, though, right? No, I didn't. I don't remember what I was doing. Okay. What about the next morning, the morning of July 19th, when you and Garcia were at Rivera's place? Me and Garcia were in Rivera's place? Right. That was the whole situation. There were so many different versions of that story. Okay. Well, in your previous testimony, you were asked what you were doing that day, and you were shown this. I didn't know at what time, but I was at the pool and from the text. Like, I was shown the text, and mm -hmm. I guess I don't know what the timestamp was at that time. Okay. This message does not say you were at the pool at 11 a.m., right? So you just got back from the pool at 4.54 p.m. Yeah, but what time did I go to the pool? You said you probably, probably at the pool at 12.18 p.m. Okay, so... Okay. So you were not at the pool at 11 a.m., like you said in your prior testimony. Well, when I was shown that, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure it had, like, a timestamp or something on it. I don't know why it said 11 at a, a specific time. But because you were... Proper impeachment judge, that's not what she said in 2019. Okay. If we could look at page 53... 52 lines 23 through 25 and 53 lines 5 through 7. I'm sorry, can you say that again? 52, 23 through 25 and 53, 5 through 7. It's mm -hmm. Objection, improper impeachment. That's what it says. I just said that. It said, okay. All right, hold on a second. Take a let Ms. Dugan, you take a look at it first. Okay. You were asked, where were you that day? You said you took Ethan to the pool. You were shown that message. You said, do you remember what time? And you said, I believe it was 11. That's that not correct. Uh, You're not reading. You're right. I'm looking no, at page that. 53 at the top. Say, I believe it was around 11 in the I morning. I believe it said around 11. All right. It's, that's, that's proper impeachment. Okay. Wow. You were not at the pool, though, around 11 a.m. that day, though, were you? For me to have said this day because I didn't remember what I was doing, and for me to come up with that time, it's because I was shown something. Well, this is, these are the messages that. about you going to the pool that day. I, I see your messages now, but at right. the time when we did this, and I was shown what time I went to the pool, I wouldn't have just come up with it at 11 o'clock without seeing a text message with the time. You said in 2019 you were, you were, took Ethan to the pool around 11 a.m. I believe Because that it, means that you wouldn't be at the money drop around 10.30 or 11 a.m., right? characterization of what she said in All right, that's sustained. Mr. Okay. Move on. This has been asked and answered. 
All right. Um, you call. We need to be mindful of the time also because yes, I have sir. to give time for redirect. I'm almost done. You call Luis Rivera during the June and July trips. You called his old number, right? That 934 number you had in your phone as Tato? I called the number, but right. I never spoke to Luis. When you couldn't get in touch with Garcia, you called that number. I believe so. And you didn't talk to Garcia because that wasn't his phone at the time, right? What, the 934 number? Right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You never talked to Luis Rivera on the phone, usually. Not that I recall, no. Okay. You did talk You did talk to him, though. You called him those two dates, and then you talked to him the day of the money drop, July 19th, right? It said that he had called me. Right. You called him, He called you, and then you called him back, right? I believe so. That's right. what the call log says. And you spoke to him. You tried to call him in June and July because you knew that he and Garcia were together in Tallahassee during that time. I didn't know that they were here. Well, then why would you call Luis Rivera? I don't remember why I called him. I called him in June and in July? Yeah, on the June trip and the July trip. If he was with Garcia, maybe I was trying to get a hold of Garcia. But those were the only times all summer, though, that you called that number, though. I don't that's recall That's what the that. expert said? I don't recall that, that that's the only time. If you were always trying to call Rivera whenever you were looking for Garcia, you would have called it more than two times the whole summer, right? I don't recall that. And then on July 19th, the reason that y'all were talking that day, you and Luis Rivera, was because that was the day you were supposed to deliver money, right? I never delivered any money. You said, so the only time that you call him is during his June and July trip to Tallahassee and the day of the money drop that summer, and your phone locations are consistent with being at his house, but those are just all coincidences. You didn't have anything to do with this murder. That's what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. Aren't you mad at Garcia and Charlie for doing this and you're innocent and you're having to answer for it? Am I mad at them? Yeah. Yeah, I've been upset. If you were mad at Garcia, I mean, just uh, not long ago, just this month, you said on a recorded call to him, I can't talk to you, I can't touch you, I can't see you, I can't feel you, and you were crying about it. Yeah, he's the father of my kids, so I'm going to love him forever. And this $17,000 cash bike during the six weeks after the murder being put on the Adis Adelson payroll, even though you didn't collect rent, you made the one appointment, your $4,000 breast augmentation, all of that within the two months of the murder, those are just all coincidences to it. You didn't have anything to do with this. It, the money had nothing to do with anything that you did. I've explained everything already. Okay. All the favors that Charlie did for you after you and him broke up, the trips, Nothing, nothing with that had to do anything with the murder. That was just a coincidence, too. Just him being nice. Mm, I guess so. Okay. The fact that he called you out of all of his ex-girlfriends after his mom just said an ex-girlfriend was mentioned. That's a coincidence, too. I guess so. The fact that your husband committed a murder for your boyfriend. That's also just a coincidence. You didn't have anything to do with it? I didn't have anything to do with it. I mean, those are some pretty unbelievable coincidences, right? Objection in proper. That's sustained. Okay, you either have the worst luck or you did this, right? Objection in proper question. Sustained. Garcia would never do anything to help Charlie Adelson, would he? I wouldn't think that, but with everything that's been, that's all in the evidence and stuff, I mean, it looks pretty bad. And you said in 2019 he would never I, do anything. I did say him. that because I would never think that they would like each other in any way or do favors for each other. Okay. I and see why I'm in the middle. I'm smack in the middle. I right. see it. That's why I'm fighting for my life. And so you did say Garcia would never do anything to help Charlie Adelson. In my 2019 testimony, yes, I did mention that. Right. And in opening, your attorney said that there was definitive proof of a link between Garcia and Charlie. What is it? What did my attorney say? No, what's the link between Garcia and Charlie? That they knew each other or they spoke to each other. How? I don't know. Okay. Apparently, everything's being done behind my back. That's why. That's all. Thank you. Redirect. Ms. McBanwell. Yes, ma'am. Let's talk. 
about your memory. Yes, ma'am. All right. Ms. Dugan was not present at Dolce Vita, was she? No, she was not. Okay. And as much as she's trying to insert her opinion as what is being said, it's just that, right? Yes, ma'am. You have ears, correct? Yes, ma'am. So does the jury? Yes, yeah. ma'am. So they can listen for themselves of what happened at that, that, that restaurant? Yes, ma'am. Now, I do want to talk about some things that Ms. Dugan purposely left out that we could all hear on that video. Like the time when he said, if they are the cops, I'm happy because I have nothing to hide. Yes, ma'am. You remember when that was played, Ms. Dugan skipped over that part and went to what she thought she heard afterwards, right? Yes, ma'am. And that's because that makes no sense. Of course. If you are all involved in a homicide together, why is Charles Adelson telling you that if it's the cops, I'm happy? That makes no sense. No sense. OK, because if you were all involved in a homicide and it was the cops, what would happen? He'd get arrested. And if you were involved, what would happen? I'd get arrested. All right. Now, she also brought up all of these portions of what Charlie Adelson is supposedly saying, OK? Yes, it's clear that half of that entire video is missing. Yes, ma'am. Let's talk about how that enhancement came to be. You provided testimony back in 2019, right? Yes, ma'am. That's before the state was able to create this new audio. Yes, ma'am. So when you testified in 2015 and answered questions, yes, you had no idea that they would even be able to create this new audio. Yes, ma'am. That's what I stated, that everything in my testimony is consistent with everything that was on the video that they just enhanced. Now, let's get to that about just enhanced, right? You were set for trial in February of 2022, right? Yes, ma'am. Valentine's Day, you were supposed to go to trial. Yes, ma'am. And then the state provided us with this magic, well, this new enhancement. Yes, ma'am. OK? And we actually agreed to reset your case. Yes, ma'am. So that we could all get the enhancement. Yes, ma'am. Because as far as we concerned, it would only contain evidence to exculpate you. Yeah, exactly. If you thought that there would be anything on there that would prove your guilt, you would have gone to trial in February. Exactly. You wouldn't have even given them an opportunity if you thought anything on that video. Yes, ma'am. Would have come up against you. Yes, ma'am. And as we sit here and listen to this video, this covert undercover thing that they did, do you hear any direct evidence in there of something to do with the homicide? That's why I stated that I've never heard Dan Martell's name, I never heard homicide, I never heard murder, I never heard Tallahassee, nothing. And I'm telling you that he is going on and on about different scenarios. Like one of the clips that she played where he says, he starts talking about a scenario like if I go to Orlando and I rob a Burger King. There's no robbery of a Burger King, right? Yes, ma'am. Are you here for a robbery of a Burger King? No, ma'am. Okay. But that's what he, one of the scenarios he prevented, presented to you. Yes, ma'am. Um, he also mentioned about something about, well, Miss Dugan says he says something about robbing a McDonald's. Yes, ma'am. Okay. He doesn't say any scenarios about a homicide. Yes, ma'am. Or a murder. Yes, ma'am. It sounds like he is just trying to justify why it is that they would say your name. And for me to make a phone call. How many times did he repeat to you, it's because they said your name, if uh, you can remember? On this video? Um, I, I can't recall. How many times have you had an opportunity to sit down and listen to the video that we just received a couple of months ago? I haven't even seen it in its entirety because they can never get anything to the jail. And so can't this, get that evidence. Was this the, maybe the second time in this trial that you were able yes, to listen to it? This is like the second time. And we still don't know what the first half was or this time that I went to the car for 10 minutes. Like They have no record of that, right? Apparently, that's what I, want, I wanted to know. Where was the record for that? There's no video of that? No video. Okay. And had they been able to enhance the entire audio, not just bits and pieces of what Charlie is saying, we, would, we wouldn't have to speculate about what that conversation was, right? Exactly. That's why I didn't 
want to commit to a certain thing that I'm saying or how I'm interpreting it because clearly it wasn't big enough for me to be like, oh my God, why are you talking about this? Or, oh my God, we got to call the cops or me run away because you said this. It's like everything was taken out of context. Just like my phone calls, just like this video and... And everything that we've all sat down and listening to, every single thing, there is no direct evidence of you being involved in a homicide. No, because they've had this video forever. I would have been arrested a long time ago. Let's talk about that. These wiretaps and this Dolce Vita, that was all known to them in May of 2016, right? I believe so, before Sigfredo was arrested? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. They released your probable cause affidavit, right? Yes, ma'am. And said it's because there was no probable cause to arrest you. Yes, ma'am. So they didn't have probable cause to arrest you until Luis Rivera was arrested, right? Yes, ma'am. Obviously, if they had some direct evidence in those wiretaps, they wouldn't need Luis Rivera. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So everything is innuendo and speculation. Yes, ma'am. You would expect if you are wiretapping people who are involved for over 400 recorded phone calls that there would at least be one thing in there, right? Yes, ma'am. In the Dolce Vita video, you can hear that you're talking. Yes, ma'am. Okay, your voice isn't raised. No. You don't sound like you're, well, we can't hear you at all. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so where Miss Dugan keeps asking you about things of what it is that you said, we won't know because they can't clarify your voice, right? Yes, ma'am. This case has always been focused on Charles Adelson. Yes, ma'am. The video was pointed at who? Charles. Whose voice is the only one that was able to be amplified? Charles. And you're always the person that is left in the dark. (laughs) Yes, ma'am. Now, going over, I want to go over some of the text message that Miss Dugan tried to commit you to try and explain what they meant, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you tell me what we talked about, I don't know, four months ago on February 23rd of this year? No, ma'am. Okay. Do you even know what day of the week it was on February 23rd of this year? No, ma'am. All right. You were asked questions about text messages over the course of 2013 to 2016. That's why I was getting a little upset because I can't remember those times and I know they want me to commit so a certain date, certain time, certain scenarios, and I just like I want to be able to provide that information, and I can't. Now, I'm referring to one of the exhibits that on March that was previously shown to you in regards to a text message dated 12 11 2016. Right, I'm showing you this. This is a snippet of a full-blown conversation, right? Yes, ma'am. The tape did not include the entire conversation. Well, that's why I had asked what's, what did the rest say, because they always take bits and pieces of everything and make it to look like something else, and it looks bad. I get it. I see it. This is my second time around. I see how it makes it look so bad. You see, when you see these things in pieces, even though it's you, you're like, this looks bad. It looks bad. And you understand why Ms. Dugan says, oh, all these coincidences. You understand that, right? Yes, ma'am. But it's because they don't have the whole story. Yes, ma'am. We tried to introduce some of the phone calls, right? Yes, ma'am. And you can't. I don't know why not, but we couldn't. I'm going to show you another text message that was shown about Charles Abelson offering to buy you a trip for your mother. Okay? Can you read that to the jury, please? The I'm scared? No, right about it. Oh, by the way, she's having a major surgery for her spine on January. She has to be out for six months. What was going on with your mom while she needed surgery? After she had, uh, something was hurting on her, on her spine. Okay. And so a back surgery that she needed to do. This has anything to do with your cancer diagnosis later on? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so Charles knew that you were going through this with your mom. Yes, ma'am. How close were you to your mom? It's very... Very close. And you did, he was offering for you and your mom to take a trip. Yeah. Apparently, yes, ma'am. And you never took that trip, right? No, ma'am. I couldn't. You could never take that trip with her. 
Objections are relevant. Over, uh, just, if you can ask, answer the question, overrule. No, I can't because my mom passed away while I was in here. Okay. And you've always felt that you hold the key to your own freedom, right? They said that themselves, that I hold the key to my own freedom. That's sustained. Your Honor, we disregard that statement. It goes to our state of mind. Over uh, that your your objections overrule. Okay. Now I want to show you some other text messages that's already been introduced into evidence. I'm showing you what's been marked as defense exhibit thirty three. Do you see the date that this text message? 3-12-2014. Okay. And this would be the morning after you had dinner at Yardbird, right? He called me and said, yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you read that text to the jury? I guess. I don't know. He called me and said, have a nice dinner and to never call him again. I'm like, WTF. Okay. And you're talking about the trail there, right? Yes, ma'am. These text messages come from Charlie. Yes, ma'am. We don't have direct text messages from back there. I don't know why we don't. But that indicates that someone was watching you at dinner, right? Yes, ma'am. And you said, and it sounds like he's mad. Objection to reading. That's yeah. sustained. Does it sound like he's mad? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Also, too, kind of strange, don't you think, that Charles would be asking you about people the next day? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now, let's look at defense exhibit 29. Good. That's good, right there. Can you read that to the jury, please? I'm letting go of the night job. I'm not going in this weekend. They are behind on paying me and shit, and it's a lot of work. Like, we shouldn't have to clean up after that. What I tip out the bus boys for, and they suck. Okay. This is evidence of you working at the night job. Yes, ma'am. Can we ask for a date on that? Sure. April 30th of 2014. This is in evidence. I'm also going to show you what's already put into evidence. This is the name. Hi. From November 6th, 2014. Put that you work in the office, not at home. All of these little statements that come from the ice cloud, all of these are just little pieces of evidence that prove that you were working for him. Yes, ma'am. Okay? And there was a text message also about you paying for the Lexus. Yes, ma'am. There's also paperwork to support that you're paying for the Lexus. Yes, ma'am. But this is not a response that they want to hear from you. Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. It's only about their truth. Yes, ma'am. Not the real truth. Or what they have. Now, I want to... She asked you about Charlie, that there being evidence that Charlie Sorry. called in prescriptions for you. Yes, ma'am. Did Charlie treat your son? Or his father did, dentally? Is that, is that I, bel I, I don't quite remember. He might have. But you got services from them, right? Yes, ma'am. I believe one time they even, they're bringing up something about you pulling your wisdom teeth. Yes, ma'am. You need a prescription after that, don't yes, you? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, no, it wasn't for any type of weird prescriptions. It was for the pain. The Vicodin. Yeah. I'm assuming it's Vicodin. I don't even remember what it was for. But yeah, from like an extraction. Now, the state tried to discuss with you about that money spike. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And she wants you to pinpoint where that money came from. Yes, ma'am. Do you remember where that money came from? No, I didn't. I didn't even know that it was spiked up like that on that exact month and from you their chart. You could easily look at this jury and say it was on that day, right? No, ma'am. I'm saying you oh, could do that. Yes, ma'am. Okay, if you wanted to make the evidence look better for you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, but that's not what you've done. No, ma'am. Even though you keep saying, I, I, I don't remember, you've said I don't remember a lot. 
Yes, ma'am. Let's talk to the jury why it is so difficult for you to remember what happened in 2014. Why do you think it's so difficult for you to remember things? Besides the fact that it was eight years ago, I've been incarcerated for six years and I had COVID twice and I just, I, I can't barely remember anything. Okay, and then you were able to recollect certain specifics once these text messages were shown to you? Yes, ma'am. And it's because it jogs your memory? Yes, ma'am. And it's right there. Even that I'm scared because who created those? Now, the state is saying that it would be weird for Garcia and Charlie to be speaking, as far as you knew, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Wouldn't it be more weird if... Charles Adelson asked his girlfriend to ask the father of her kid, who hated him, to commit a murder for him. That would be extremely weird. Okay. The person who doesn't tolerate cocaine use is going to be okay with a murder, right? Exactly. Now, if law enforcement, if you are even worried that you did anything wrong, okay, and that it could possibly be law enforcement monitoring what you're doing, what would you or any other reasonable person do? Apparently, everybody had a burner. Like, I'm learning it every single time. Or don't speak on the phone. If you were involved in this homicide and Charles Adelson came to you and said, listen, some dude from up north went and mentioned your name and Tuto's name to my mom. What's up? Yeah. You were involved in that. Would you have freaked out? Of course. Would you have agreed to call someone who could have potentially been the FBI? Yes. You would have if you were involved? Oh, no, 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 no. I, if I you missed, were involved, I you'd, took be, that you'd out. probably say, don't ask me to do that. Exactly. You do that. Exactly. And he kept pushing for me to do it. That's the part that I don't quite understand. He kept telling me, kept telling me. And he kept saying to you, it's because they said your name. Yes, ma'am. He also says to you, because they brought this out, go in there and say that this is charity and give them the money. Yes, ma'am. Is that because he says if they take the money, then it's not the cops? Yes, ma'am. He also insinuates that, hey, we're helping out the cops by finding out who this person is, right? Yes, ma'am. He even mentions in there that when we kind of bring him out, mm -hmm. we'll then call the FBI. Yes, ma'am. He was trying to convince you that he had nothing nefarious going on. Exactly. Okay. And he just kept repeating himself over and over again. And over. That's why I wish they heard the other, however many other calls. Or if there was an actual full recording of what was happening at that table. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Miss Dugan keeps saying that you didn't say this or didn't say that or your voice didn't get loud. If you were involved, your voice probably would have gotten louder, right? I mean, what would I would probably be pissed off and reacting a completely different way. Because you'd be suspecting that, oh my God, I'm about to go down for a murder. Exactly. And I have two kids. Exactly. You wouldn't sit there and let him talk his mouth off, mm -hmm. right? Or continue to use the phone. Why? Exactly. Why use the phone? Why meet up? Why be in a, even a public place? I mean... Can you pinpoint to all of the recordings that you listen to, okay? Is there ever a time where there is something about anyone, you, yes, talking about being worried about getting called by the police? No, ma'am. You are actually... Explain to the jury why you got so angry on that phone call. On the, the one that I was yelling at Charlie to stop aggravating you and to do something about this. It, because it was just so many phone calls after phone calls and he's been talking about the same thing over and over and over. Different scenarios or do this or do that or whatever. And like, you call him. You, you, you call the number. And is that part of what annoyed you is that he was pressured? Like, you call, you call. Yeah, because they kept saying my name. That's the only reason, because they kept saying my name. And every time you start saying, I'm going to call the FBI myself, because if anyone's messing with me, because they I, said your name. I hear that now, and I hear it from the, the phone call that it, he was trying to calm me back down. Immediately as you suggest that you're going to call the FBI, what does he say? No, Katie, listen, 
Yeah. yeah, all of a sudden it's, yeah. The other things about them talking about, oh, he, you hear them saying, oh, they can't put you in a car. And if that segment is in relation to his scenario talking about a robbery, right? I believe so. Like he's explaining to you probably why, hey, listen, the FBI might be suspecting us of something, but don't worry, we're not involved in anything. Uh, that, uh, that's why I was getting kind of confused and like how she was saying like what was being said because I could barely hear it and I can barely understand it. And like I said, I don't want to commit. I know how it is with this whole thing, committing to certain things and then they go back and they make it look bad. It already looks bad. And... I don't even know like the which clips. I don't know if it's a consistently happening like that or that's what happened right after it because we were seeing different clips of of the video. And you trust that the jury can listen for themselves yes, the entire video in its entirety. Yes, ma'am. That's without... why we waited for the for this video to come out so that my jury will be able to see this. And we were hoping we could hear you. Yes, ma'am. But coincidentally we can't. I don't know why I never moved from the table, I was the same exact spot. And we just can't hear you. Now, the state also brought up the fact that Charlie does favors for you and pays for things for you. Yes, ma'am. Nay. Yes. You may. Ms. McDonald, I'm showing you what's been pre-marked as defense exhibit 39. Do you recognize what this is? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, do you see your name there? Yes, ma'am. And do you see Charles Edison's name there? Yes, ma'am. Does this look like a fair and accurate representation of a segment of his iCloud account? Yes, ma'am. The cell bright printout? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, at this time I move into evidence what's been pre-marked as defense exhibit 39. Any objection? No objection. Be admitted as defense 39. Thank you, sir. May I talk to public? Yes. <coughs> and this is from February 2nd, 2014. You say, by the way, I need a favor. Whenever you get a chance, I need to borrow from you. Yes, ma'am. Charles Davidson's response. No problem. I'll call you tonight. Thank you. You know I'll pay you back. Yes, ma'am. No worries, I know you're good here. It's not a situation where Charles Abelson would just shower you with gifts and money. No. He'd help you out sometimes? Yes, ma'am. And you'd pay him back? Yes. Okay. You weren't driving around in fancy, expensive cars, right? <laughs> no, actually, that Lexus that I bought from him always broke down. That's why he was helping me with Sully because of the fact that I bought that and then he just breaks down every time. Anyways, I was getting frustrated with the car. He didn't pay your rent? He did not pay my rent. He didn't pay your kid's tuition? No, ma'am. Okay. He didn't buy you fancy bags like how June has and <laughs> fancy shoes? No, ma'am. Okay. Okay, one, Judge, I'm going to just take the, they're two separate exhibits, let me show it to the state. I'm going to go ahead and give them to Tracy so she can mark them. Okay. And then I'll ask a few questions so that when I do this, I can answer this. All right. Now, you had mentioned previously, and 
Ms. Dugan brought it out, that there were times that you were speaking in code on the phone. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you can hear it, right? Yes, ma'am. Now, back in 2019, when you were on the oath and you were asked about this, you admitted that you were talking in code, right? Yes, ma'am. And you said to the state exactly why it is that you were speaking that way. Yes, ma'am. Does Charles Adelson, whenever he talks, for example, about marijuana, how does he refer to it on its on the calls? And in code. The bonsai trees, right? Yeah, the right? bonsai tree, yes. Okay. So it wasn't unusual to him, no. to you, that he was kind of behaving that way. And that's the thing. When he starts talking, it's like you kind of like pick up like kind of how his you know like his way of talking his little lingo and then it's like you're talking kind of like back like mm -hmm. him but you're not really it's not like because you're doing a code or you're coming up with this elaborate scheme of how to talk on the phone you wouldn't talk on the phone to begin with since the date of your arrest have you heard a peep from charles Adelman? no ma'am okay has he done anything to help you no ma'am okay have you even spoken to him? No, ma'am. And you've known from the date of your arrest who the state wanted. Yes, ma'am. Okay. They made it very clear. Yes, ma'am. And you know they wanted you Objection, to cooperate. Objection, motion and lemonade. The next question is, do you know they wanted you to cooperate? Uh, you can ask that. You know they wanted you to cooperate? Yes, ma'am. And it would be as easy as you could have pled guilty and just given them what they wanted, right? Yes, ma'am. But that wouldn't be what? Truthful. Okay. You'd have to lie about your involvement. Exactly. Or how, whatever they wanted me to say. Okay. And you've tried to explain yourself to the government over and over again. Uh, plenty of times. Okay. And your story has never changed since day one. It never changed. Not like Luis Rivera's. Definitely not like Luis. Okay. And you know that this is a very tough time for you right now, sitting here having to answer all of these questions about your personal life, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And there's a camera behind us. Yes, ma'am. So you've had to go through this before and have all of yes, your personal business all over, everywhere, right? Yes, ma'am. It's not easy. You know, and you still elected to get up and do it again today. <sighs> yes, ma'am. Why? Because I want them to know the truth. It has to come out for me. All this speculation and all of this evidence and how everything's been, it's, I've been living this for six years. And I, I just, if I didn't come up here and I didn't talk to my jury, <laughs> I, I don't even know. I, I don't know what the outcome would be. Okay. All right, so that's 40 and 41. All right, they'll be admitted. Oh my God, I have a bad, I'm bad news, better now. I have to take it back tomorrow, but the partial loan is expensive for both, so I need a loan, buddy. Wow, imagine if I took it to another mechanic. I just texted Sully my PC, which is the credit card. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm taking care of Katie's car. Thanks, bud. Are you sure it's going to be like a grand or so bro? Now this is between Charles Adelson and Sully, right? Okay, yes ma'am. This is Charles Adelson going behind your back to try and take it. Impulse, right. Is that because he knows that you are not somebody that just takes all these handouts? No, I don't. I don't 
I don't like to owe anybody anything. No further questions, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Navarro, you may step down to the council table. Thank you, Your Honor. Which one do you want? Yeah, you can just leave everything there. All right, is the defense calling any other?